welcome to Think Tech on Spectrum OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Nicole Horry. And I'm R.B. Kelly. In our show this time, we'll take the time to review the most recent 2018 Top 5 Think Tech talk shows and the staff pick. We'll check out the elements of the best of the best and get a handle on the public issues and the guests involved. Think Tech produces more than 30 talk shows every week in our downtown studio. They're very diverse, and their coverage is also very diverse, showing you things you might never otherwise know about. Every week, Think Tech chooses its top five Think Tech talk shows from the week before, based on the number of views each of them has had on the internet. For this past week, the winning shows were as follows. Number one. From the series Young Talents Making Way, hosted by Andrea Gabrielli, it's called Beware, with guest Aubrey Davis. It's on our Young Talents Making Way playlist. We mentioned about um, so the importance of bees, the importance of bees in Hawaii and for economy as well. Um, what's Maybe we have a slide, I believe, where we're showing a trend. There is a, a figure that we brought, uh, which we're basically, where we're basically showing, um, oh, I think here it is, uh, the number of colonies mm -hmm. in the United States, uh, basically across from 1975, 2010. I see a sharp decline. Oh, most definitely. Like, I think it's because like a lot of the time we don't, technically think about bees because they're like these two little centimeter insects that just seem Tiny to and we don't buzz and sting all the time, but they actually have a greater importance that I didn't even know until I actually researched about it. And it tells you that at this current rate, by the year 2035, we might not even have any bees left. So, um your projects, uh, your science projects at Sacred Hearts Academy brought you uh, to China as well for an award that you won. Yes. Um, and also, um, you were mentioning something about what we can do actually to prevent uh, this decline and try and recover the populations of bees. What are some of the remedies that people can, you know, do to try and, and, and sort of change this trend line which we had a look at? So there are a lot of things that we can do, um, or there's a, also a lot of things that are being done. Um, so there's a lot of, a lot of countries have partaken in a bee conservation project of some sort. Like North America has like this North American pollinator protection campaign type of thing. Um, and what I found really interesting and what I really liked because I feel like that's something that is really easy and that we can incorporate in both public and private schools here on the island is um, Southern Oregon University and Bee City USA um, launched a program um, in April of 2015 called, uh, it's like a Bee Campus USA program where they have like, they practice like sustainable farming and planting like more a variety of plants on like college campuses that will contribute to bringing bees back to the environment. Number two, from the series Asia in Review, it's called What Makes Singapore Changi Airport the World's Best Airport, hosted by Lily Ong, with guest Topo Ju. It's on our Asia in Review playlist. So other facilities that we have in the airport is we do have massage chairs. Uh, so they're all free for use and no need to put any coins. Oh, uh, wonderful. To, yeah, so they're all free to use and they are dotted across the entire terminals, uh, all the three, all the four terminals in the airport. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what we do to really create that. And these are the high-end high, high end Aussie massage chairs? These are the Aussie that... massage chairs, right. yeah. So we, we work with them and then we put them uh, across. And then certain terminals actually have a full body massage uh, uh, But those, those are paid service? Those are also free. Also free. Oh, free yes. Oh, yes. As wow. long as it's OC machine and then it's part of Changi Airport, it's it's uh, it's available for free of use for by our passengers. Wonderful. And I saw that there's a Sheila Sh um, Beauty Lab that offers free makeovers. Yes, they do. Um, free makeovers for passengers. Even in Terminal Three, we have um, 
a bar. Uh, it's actually uh, managed by the, the Raffles uh, Long Bar. Mm-hmm. So they actually can uh, concord uh, the Singapore Sling for you if you're departing. Of course, that's after the uh, after three hours. I mean, after three p.m. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you depart, you can just. Show your boarding pass and get a free, free drink on us. A free Singapore sleigh. A free Singapore wow. sleigh. Wow, wow, and that's from the authentic Raffles bar. That's really, that's wow. really. And I read about um, that's also a whiskey bar. Yes, there is a whiskey bar. I think they are kind of uh, together. So uh, mm-hmm. of course, uh, you know, there is also uh, some distillations that you can see mm-hmm. uh, how this whiskey, this, uh, this uh, whiskey is being made. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I did, I did read that there's over a hundred uh, types of whiskey that's, that's right. being and, sold and, there. That's right, that's and right. this is a great location because you are receiving a lot of high end customers and, and so right. many approach nationalities too. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And is it true that only um, Changi is chosen as the particular location to sell um, special concoction of whiskey? Uh, um, I think it's a combination of different reasons, but I guess it's also the availability of a space because uh, even though the airport is big, but we are running out of real estate space. So if right. anything that we can find, we will work with uh, our vendor to try and put it up. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and of course, serve our passengers. Right. Uh, I had to imagine this place running out of space because this is so spacious. How big exactly is Changi Airport? Airport. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know how big uh, the exact size, but uh, the, in terms of capacity, uh, for all the four terminals, we can manage up to 85 million passengers per year. So, the, how many? 85 million passengers. 85 per, million per passengers, and that's including the latest, the latest terminal, terminal four. four terminal right. four. Right. So, which are the different airlines that are coming through? Are there and is was there a particular terminal that's dedicated to Singapore Airlines? Uh, so yes, Singapore Airlines are uh, they fly out of terminal two and three. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it depends on the destination. So for shorter destinations within uh, Southeast Asia, they, they depart from terminal two, whereas the long haul flights are out from terminal three. Number three. From the series Cyber Underground, it's called Using Social Media Apps, Pros and Cons, hosted by Rochelle Mansilungan with guests CJ Rioka, Ashlyn Miyashiro, and Jack Jardina. It's on our Cyber Underground playlist. I would say think twice about what you're going to post and then think again. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, I use a lot of Twitter. Okay, not I don't use Twitter. Okay. I've never, well, I've tweeted a few times. Yeah. But really, I just use it for information gathering purposes. I mean, I read some sports, but uh, it is truly amazing what you can pull off of Twitter, yes. whether you're mining data oh, or yes. you're just using keyword searches. Right. Um, you know, if I'm researching a particular topic or I'm just being nosy about somebody, <laughs> I mean, you can <laughs> spend 10 minutes on Twitter and find out more than you ever would have dreamed. Yes. Uh, and I think Twitter is pretty hot right now as far as being in the news because of our um, current administration uh-huh. and they're using it differently. Amazing. And it's, yeah, Twitter is a big one for me. Yes, I remember you doing that in our database class, right? Right. Data mining. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes, in Dale Nakasoni's class. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Dale. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Ashley? Um, I just think, like, especially when you put, like, I mean, posting for sure, but, like, yeah. when you put your interest, like oh, some yeah. might be kind of like, maybe you shouldn't say that, right? Yeah. I mean, it, you are you, but you shouldn't say that right. in public. Like right. it's kind of scary. Or even, I kind of shy away from putting where I work. Because mm. I've had people where they contact me like, oh, oh you worked at so-and-so? I worked there too, but I found out later they didn't work there. You know, it's like, oh, that's, that's kind of... Oh, yes. So They're like, like a lot of cyber social stuff. Social engineering. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. yeah, social engineering, exactly. Yeah. Mm. yeah I think uh, location settings and geolocation yeah. in general, that is... It's a huge one Yeah. because if you use it a lot, depending on how you use it, mm-hmm. you have that location service turned on. I mean, that's just like a homing device that you're attaching to yourself 24 hours a day. Yeah. And uh, that can be dangerous for people gathering information about you. And you might not want anyone to know that. Right. So yeah. That's number one for me. Right. Mm. Doesn't um, Snapchat make you do that now? It makes you. Oh yeah, I remember when exactly that came out. Or oh, whatever. Yeah, it would it. map out all your friends oh, on yes. the US so you know or you know the is. Hawaii Island. Yeah, I didn't use it in that. <laughs> and you could <laughs> see <scary>. where. <laughs> I don't know. What? No, you can see know. where your friend Tom <laughs> is at 3 p.m. <laughs> He's at Starbucks or oh, something or nice. in Kampale. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's really right. funny. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew that. Number four, from the series Hispanic Hawaii. It's called Dr. Stetz's Courageous Positive Attitude Battle Against Cancer, with host Richard Concepcion and guest Melba Stetz, PhD. It's on our Hispanic Hawaii playlist. (music) 
cancer is it's not a guarantee that it's going to be cured. It's, it's, it's I don't guarantee. think so. You can talk to other people, they're going to say miraculously they're cured, whatever. I don't believe it. They're cells. And for example, in my case, that it was in one breast, and here in, under the armpit, I decided the other breast too, because cells can move in seconds. So why would I do that, only take this away, and have to come back two years later maybe and take the other breast, right? So prophylactically, I don't take everything away. Uh, males here in Hawaii, prostate cancer, colon cancer is a big thing, but people don't get checked. A lot of, and I'm not saying here in Hawaii, but at least in Puerto Rico, a lot of machismo. I don't need to check my prostate. Okay, then you might lose, and you might lose your life too. So how do we get checked? We just go to the doctor and request? Yes, you say you're educated, and you say my family, like I always said, about my family, you always say, your family has this history, please just screen me. And they'll screen you before it's too late. Wow. You can lose not only those organs, but your life as well. So let me ask you, how do you stay so motivated? Because I always think about you uh, sometime when I got a headache or my back hurt. Uh, the other day I went ice skating with my daughter, I fell. And, then, and as soon as I fell in, in the ground, and it was like, oh, I need to take a break. But I thought about you, I say, this is nothing. And she's going through cancer, and she is an inspiration to keep myself motivated. How, how do you do it every day? What is the secret? Oh, thank you. My father was very positive. My, my mother, my family, in the Army, everything was like, suck it up and drive on, you know that? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I jumped from planes, I did different <laughs> things. So I think I've always been in that same motto. And that's what I help people with peak performance because I'm like, what are we going to do? I mean, it, we have times to ventilate and feel sad and down, completely understood. But then if you're going to do it again, like I don't see clients that come every week to complain to me. No, you complain, but you're trying to work on something. I think while you complain about things, and get out of your system and share and kumbaya and everything, you should also be thinking about, okay, what can I do about it? Be responsible about it. So I just think God gave me this life. I'm still alive. There's a, there's a reason for me to be here, not just to be sucking oxygen. Number five from the series Humane Architecture is called Peter Shee's Exotic Entrepreneurship with Martin Despang and guest Peter Shee. It's on our Humane Architecture playlist. This building is actually, we're using the concrete block, which is on the table, and uh, they yeah. call it double I, double I. There's a groove on either side, you can put the temperature steel, and the vertical steel, you can just plant it in. Because the cell, it's uh, small, all you need is peak gravel, you put it inside, and put the gravel down, and pull it out. So the whole thing, instead of eight inches wide, can be just six inches. Mm -hmm. And it's much stronger than regular. Mm -hmm. The whole top and bottom is grind smooth. So when you put epoxy, two bead on epoxy, like this, like a toothpaste. Absolutely. In, in one hour, the whole thing is adhered into one unit. Absolutely. So very efficient way to put up something. What a and, great uh, engineering mm -hmm. innovation. Mm -hmm. And so is the next one, if you can get the next picture. You're also cultivating something that you call tilled up. And this article, we also have to give credits to um, <clears throat> to basically Matt Moy, who was providing articles uh, right. from the archives about your work. Right. Uh -huh. And this is something, explain a little bit in two sentences what tilled up is, Peter. Tilled up is instead of have a concrete port with a vertical form on both sides, that means if the wall is 28 feet, you have the wall, the plywood come down, plywood come down, and pour it inside. Mm -hmm. And uh, once when you pour it inside, it's hard because aggregate will be covered on the bottom of it and very hard to vibrate. So if we have the concrete floor uh, on the outside, why can't we put a bound breaker on the ground and pour it four inches curb, pour the slab on the ground, mm -hmm. and just lift it up? Mm -hmm. It's much faster. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, Every concrete wall can be poured on the ground. Each one just keep on 
uh, lift it up like a tilt up. Yeah. And then you pour concrete pilaster, which is kaolium, yeah. and block them together. Mm -hmm. All the reinforcing steel mm -hmm. will be yeah. matched together. The whole thing becomes one entity. Yeah. It's easy way to construct and mm -hmm. very fast. And in the best tradition of Hawaiians who have always shared their best things, tracing way back, you also exported that technology all the way back to another thing we share to Nebraska. We also have a staff pick. This time it's from the series Finding Respect in the Chaos. And it's called Tap Out Dating Violence with host Cynthia Lee Sinclair and guests Kasha Spellman and Lydia Grasso. It's on our Finding Respect in the Chaos playlist. When you look at the statistics in the Hawaii uh, Youth Risk Behavior Survey, um, you see that boys are experiencing it at rates that most people wouldn't even believe. They are experiencing dating violence uh, as the victim or survivor at rates that most people don't even believe. And so it is really our, I believe, our responsibility as a program to make sure that young boys, young masculine identified individuals, young male identified individuals feel comfortable coming forward uh, at the same rates that. Um, feminine or female identified individuals feel comfortable coming forward. And that's a responsibility of all, but especially for the young, the young people. So I agree. Yeah. I think that's great that you guys are doing that because I know that some, some of the outreach programs that I have seen don't include and aren't so inclusive and they're not as effective. It's our questioning in an open way now where they didn't used to be able to do that. And so mm -hmm. I think that's really important to be able to, to get out there. Um, so you guys have been around since 1999. Mm -hmm. Who was the one who first came out with all this? Whose idea was it? Do you know? Well, um, I, th I mean, I think it was pretty collaborative at Domestic Violence Action Center, but I know um, the former, former VP of the COE department don't ask me what the COE stands for. I think it's Community Outreach Education. <laughs> okay. Community Outreach and Education Department right. within DBAC um, um, uh, was the one who, she, she, she helped develop many of the programs that are at Domestic Violence Action Center. And so she was really instrumental. Interestingly enough, though, Kaylee, our, um, the guy that everyone just saw. Oh, right. And I forgot to introduce him. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. So Kaylee, our other outreach educator, he has actually been with Domestic Violence Action Center and the teen program for almost 13 years now. Wow. So is it almost 13 or almost 14? He's almost. coming up on either 13 or 14 years. So he's been around almost since the beginning. Yeah. Um, so he's seen a lot of changes, a lot of the trends change. Um, he's been around for a lot of that, so That's it's unfortunate. Great. Yeah, he, he couldn't be on here today to, to share how some of the trends have changed over the years because they, right. they really have. Next show, because I want you guys to come back again. Okay. Back. <laughs> Give me an update about how things are going and, right. you know, the kind of progress you guys are making because I know it's going to be mm -hmm. amazing, absolutely amazing. You can always find the links to these shows in our daily email advisories. If you don't already get our daily email advisories, you can sign up to get them on our thinktechhawaii.com homepage. These are only samplings from the top five in the staff pick from across our 30 plus weekly talk shows. There are of course many more. To see these shows in their entirety, go to thinktechhawaii.com or youtube.com slash thinktechhawaii. Great diversity, great community, great content at ThinkTech. If you have any questions or comments about these or other shows, please let us know. And yes, it's okay to share them with your friends and colleagues. Thanks so much for watching our shows and for supporting our efforts at ThinkTech.
And now, let's check out our ThinkTech schedule of events going forward. ThinkTech broadcasts its talk shows live on the internet from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. Then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long and on the weekends. And some people listen to them all night long and on the weekends. If you missed a show or if you want to replay or share any of our shows, they're all archived on demand on thinktechhawaii.com and YouTube. For our audio stream, go to thinktechhawaii.com slash audio and we post all our shows as podcasts on iTunes. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links. Or better yet, sign up on our email list and get our daily email advisories. ThinkTech has a high-tech green screen studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to see it or be part of our live audience or if you want to participate in our shows, contact shows at thinktechhawaii.com. If you want to pose a question or make a comment during a show, call 808-374-2014 and help us raise public awareness on ThinkTech. Of course, ThinkTech lives on the internet and on mobile devices. We're now streaming live on our Facebook page, and we're building an app for Apple and Android devices that will let you view our videos live and through the night and let you search and view our thousands of videos on demand. Stand by, and we'll let you know when it's available for download. Yes, we take calls during our live shows or anytime, night or day. Leave us a question or a commentary to say what's on your mind. If it's not abusive, we'll play it. You can leave your name or be anonymous. Speak up, speak out, speak your mind on ThinkTech, and make yourself heard. Or if you'd prefer, we'll call you. We want to include you and engage you in our conversations. So don't be surprised if we call to say yes. We'll be calling you live on one of our shows. Stand by for that call. Go ahead, give us a thumbs up on YouTube or send us a tweet at ThinkTechHI. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives in these islands and in this country. We want to stay in touch with you, and we'd like you to stay in touch with us. Let's think together. And now here's this week's Think Tech commentary. Can you do the impossible? What does impossible really mean? Is anything truly impossible? Humans can't fly, but the Wright brothers proved an airplane could get us close enough. When I think about the impossible, I don't really worry much about the undoable. I know I can't jump off a cliff and start flying. I know I can't close my eyes and teleport myself to China. Picture for a second your own life and your own dreams. What are those things that you've always wanted to do that seem completely impossible? Now hold that thought for a second. Is it actually impossible? Or does it just feel impractical because you don't think you can't do it? Possible for someone else, perhaps, but not for you? There's the problem. And the solution, believe it or not, isn't all that complicated. It's commitment. The number one thing you must have in order to do the impossible is commitment. It comes before planning and action and everything else. It's the hardest thing to come by. But without it, all else is wasted. So what is commitment? Merriam-Webster defines it as the state of being obligated or emotionally compelled. Commitment in my mind is the resolution to succeed. It's the burning desire that absolutely has to be present in order to do your impossible. It's the drive that keeps you moving forward when defeat looks certain. It's your obligation to risk everything for success because living without it seems pointless. When you commit, you have to commitment to do. You can't, commitment to, you can't commit to try. Committing to try doesn't work. Committing to try means you'll give it your best, and if, you, if it doesn't work out, it wasn't meant to be. When you're doing the impossible, things don't work out because you tried. They work out because you kept trying and never give up. What does it take to commit? Clearly, the main reason people are afraid to commit is to something is because they don't know what it will require. It's never completely obvious what you're signing up for. You might think that if you really want something, then it shouldn't matter because I don't think that's true. The cost does matter. So what is the actual cost? Sure, in any commitment, whether it's business or, pers or personal, there's a leap into the uncertain. But the idea that there's no way to know what's required is more of an excuse than a real barrier. Those are the questions you have to ask yourself. When you come to a conclusion, it's a lot easier to look at your impossible dream and say, 
yes, that's worth it, or no, I'm not willing to pay that price. Either answer is fine. But making that decision based on real analysis instead of fear is important. So my friends, can you do the impossible? Let me know. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. The Atherton Family Foundation, Castle and Cook, Hawaii. The Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education. Collateral Analytics, the Cook Foundation. The Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners. Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, the Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology, Hawaiian Electric Companies, the High Tech Development Corporation, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Integrated Security Technologies, Kamehameha Schools, Dwayne Carisu, Carol Mon Lee and the Friends of ThinkTech, MW Group Limited, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sidney Stern Memorial Trust, the Volo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Okay, RV, that wraps up this week's edition of Think Tech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on Spectrum OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like RV does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more Think Tech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on Think Tech, Visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a guest or a host, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks so much for being part of our Think Tech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and global awareness in Hawaii. And of course, the ongoing search for innovation wherever we can find it. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. I'm Nicole Horry. And I'm Arby Kelly. Aloha, everyone. Mm -hmm.